What's going on, Jerome's? So we slept on it. Well, may maybe more of a nap, but we're back in the saddle again. Viking six and five, staying alive, so firmly in control of the playoff destiny, and all of the issues are fixable. And the Vikings just hang on to the football, and you win. All that stuff, just like uh, when the Vikings started 0-3, 1-4, but it is what it is. We keep moving on, and it is Thanksgiving week, and we're running our annual Thanksgiving Food Shelf fundraiser. So all Venmos, all Super Chats in November will be donated to Twin Cities Food Shelves, and you guys have been uh, amazingly generous uh, so far. Uh, and... We've had, we've had some big time donations. I absolutely love it, man. Uh, we're up at like 1500 plus. Uh, then we're also going to toss in 500 bucks. So uh, thank you to the Jeromes. Uh, we're paying it forward, uh, doing something good uh, in our community uh, this holiday season. And it's, uh, yeah, especially after a Vikings loss, it just like mm, make me feel good. There you go. Uh, and it, it was kind of rough last night. Where, so you saw in the second half of the Saints game. Kevin O'Connell getting conservative, sort of taking the air out of the ball, not letting Josh Dobbs be Josh Dobbs. And I mean, the Vikings basically let the Saints back in the game. And I, I do think that the conservative game plan, both in the second half, settling for field goals, uh, punting uh, on fourth and one in the first half, I, I think it did doom the Vikings. Now, yes, turnovers is part of it. Yes, uh, the 75-yard touchdown drive at the end was part of it as well. But it was rough, man. And Kevin O'Connell, here's the thing, like, we're hard on Kevin O'Connell, and we call a spade a spade when we see it because we have high expectations, and we know that he's very capable of being one of the best coaches in this league, and I do respect that he generally learns from his mistakes, and hopefully he'll take this one to heart because his conservative style in the game did hold back the Vikings and did result in the loss, but we pointed out. I get choked up. Is that you, Rona? Uh, yes, the Flores defense should have made one last stand, but O'Connell hung his defense out to dry with his conservative offensive game plan. I just said that. And the turnovers. Uh, if your defense holds your opponent to 2 of 12 on third down, 1 and 5 in the red zone, if you don't win, your offense is at fault. And also the fact that you're doing that on the road uh, against a team that had just beat Buffalo as well as Kansas City. It's tough, man. It's tough. And what really sucks is that the Vikings should have won that game. Should have had it. But like we said, at the end of the day, in terms of there being a meaningless, quote unquote, regular season game, the the road out of conference games, whatever, whatever, man. But at a certain point, I mean, that Flores defense is getting hot, but woo, woo. I mean, we're not at this point yet, but I don't know. Just, just, just give it some time. But uh, of course, having Justin Frank and Jefferson back in the fold will, will be fantastic. And we, we are willing to give some leeway to Josh Dobbs. Because, I mean, Dobbs were like Kevin O'Connell, where he warped our sense of expectations because of how well he played in the Cardinals game uh, in the second half, as well as the first half of the Saints game, as well as the beginning uh, of the Broncos game. Uh, I mean, uh, Josh Dobbs, uh, towards the end of the game uh, yesterday, basically looked like how you would expect a journeyman backup who's been with the team for three weeks to look. Right? But uh, the fact that he's raised his game, and yes, he was a major part of the last two wins, giving him some leeway. Also, I want to see what he can do with Justin Frank and Jefferson. And... The Vikings definitely could have benefited from J.J. Uh, last night against the Broncos. PS2 basically erased Addison, and uh, I, I, I'm a, uh, my money's on J.J. in a matchup uh, against Patrick Sertain the second, even though PS2 is one of the best corners in the league. Uh, then Addison could have operated uh, freely against cornerback twos, and it really could have opened up the passing game. Uh, and you'll notice that lack of deep shots you know, without J.J. in the mix we need to add that dimension back into uh, the offense. Now, I'm not saying that Justin Jefferson should return before he's 100%. All I'm saying is that J.J., he better be 100% Monday night against the Bears because the Vikings can't drop that one because it's an in-conference, in-division game, and it's a home game. Can't lose that one, baby. Got, got to go into the bye at 7-5 and five and staying alive. Uh, uh, our guy, John Ledyard, uh, does gr great draft, draft coverage. So he, he pointed out the... The Steelers have ha been having some offensive issues, and running the ball, not so much. Now, Jalen Warren, he of the <laughs> constantly getting uh, fined his entire game check, has been running the ball great for Pittsburgh, and he's been a late-season fantasy pickup. He may be a league winner, uh, but it it's so funny. But they, they keep on trying to make Najee Harris a thing. So he tweeted this out, legitimately hilarious. How can team be so adverse to common sense? So Jalen Warren, uh, nine carries yesterday for buck 29 and a tutty, 14.3 yards per carry. Najee, 12 for thir 35 and 2.9 yards per carry. Now, I, I do think that Najee does have talent, but it just isn't panning out. And I, I do feel like the Trent Richardson comparisons are starting to creep in. Uh, but Jalen Warren, 
Dude, he runs hard, and he runs with burst, man. Uh, and with the Vikings, I mean, it initially was the Cam Akers versus Madison debate, and then Cam popped his Achilles. But now, I mean, Ty Chandler, Ty Chandler's been really, looking really good and explosive. And on the ground this year, uh, Madison is averaging only 3.7 yards per carry now. Career-wise, he had only averaged 4.1 as Dalvin's understudy. Now, we chalk that up to – yeah, him primarily playing in short yardage and goal line situations, it's like, okay, may maybe things will work out, but things aren't working out. And his two fumbles this year, two fumbles lost, were in just back-breaking spots, one against the Eagles and, of course, one against the Broncos, which completely cha changed the complexion. Now, the Vikings, frankly, should have won both of those road games. Uh, but you know, it's been tough. And Madison has had a couple of big-time drops this year, too. Uh, frankly, he had a walk-in touchdown against the Chiefs, which also should have been a win. Uh, but Chandler, I mean, Chandler has shown uh, amazing burst. You know, 160 uh, yards on 33 carries, 4.8 yards per carry. Now, yes, some of that is warped by the fake punt, but Ty Chandler is better is a better receiver than Madison, and Ty Chandler is just as good as a pass protector. So I, I don't understand why Deuce keeps continuing to get work. And I, I do like Alexander Madison, but at, at a certain point, you got to ride the hot hand, uh, and you have to recognize what the hot hand is going to be. And also remember, back in September, Kevin O'Connell said that, hey, if guys don't start taking care of the football, they're going to be benched. Cap. Cap, cap, cap. Mm. Uh, but also, so y you know for a fact that some Vikings fans who just love being miserable, uh, you know, we're not naming names, we're not naming stations, but during, during the Vikings' five-game winning streak, you knew that they were just mad. They're just like, why can't this team lose? They don't have Jefferson. They don't have Kirk Cousins. Why can't this team lose? They they need to lose. Boo, boo, boo. Uh, but, I mean, Sunday night, it, it honestly feels like some Vikings fans are rooting for the team to lose. <laughs> and I, I don't know why. Um, I, again, I'm not here to judge what makes a fan a fan. But, honestly, if you're rooting for your team to lose games, like outside of a late season for a draft position, but yeah, uh, uh, yeah, late late season. We're not talking about freaking September October like some people do, but I don't know. Like yeah, the Vikings lost a close game in prime time due to self inflicted mistakes and negative Vikings fans who were mad that they couldn't be miserable during the five game winning streak. I don't know what it is. Like I, I feel like some Vikings fans, and maybe it's just Minnesota sports writ large, are just like I'm only happy when I'm complaining and miserable and negative and. I, you know, some people say that they're, uh, you know, oh, I'm just being realistic, bro, as an excuse to be negative. Nah, 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 nah. Although we were kind of emo this morning, not going to lie. You know, those 2 a.m. videos, I've been mean, a little bit exhausted, a little bit frustrated, a little bit everything, man. Uh, but look at the uh, two playoff races. So the AFC, AFC is interesting. So Chiefs play the, the Eagles tonight. It's going to be a hell of a Monday night football game. Ravens up at 2. I actually love the Ravens in, in that spot, man. Uh, putting the bang thing on the Joe Burrow less Bengals. Uh, Jaguars up at three. Uh, they had a nice rebound at home against the Tennessee Titans. The Dolphins. I don't believe in the Dolphins. I just really don't. I, I feel like they they can't beat good teams, and maybe they'll get to the division round. But once they play Kansas City or Baltimore or whoever, I think they'll struggle. Uh, the Browns uh, currently in the playoff places. Nice win over the Steelers. DTR getting it done. Uh, Texans. Texans. I, I, I'm all aboard the C.J. Stroud uh, train, man. Uh, I said in the draft that he was the safest quarterback of the big three, uh, and he's shown up and shown out. I mean, Houston, Tank Dell, Will Anderson, Nico Collins, Singletary, they're looking good. I mean, uh, Houston's playing some great ball under D'Amico Ryan's respect. The Steelers, blah. Blah. I mean, how, how does – Danny DeVito with the Giants have as many touchdown passes as, as uh, Kenny Pickett. And, again, going back to Jordan Addison, even though, yes, uh, Addison struggled against PS2, maybe maybe the theory about Jordan Addison being the best wide receiver in NFL history is true because he made Kenny Pickett into a first-round pick. He made Caleb Williams win the Heisman. Look at Caleb Williams this year. And now he's just doing great things. I mean, five straight wins without J.J. Hmm. Mm. Uh, but the Steelers, the Steelers are very pooping. Uh, the Bills, even with the win against the Jets, are still on the outside looking in. The Colts are whatever. Broncos, congratulations. Cool. Uh, Bengals are sinking. Raiders, I mean, they, they had a nice bump uh, initially with Antonio Pierce, but I, I just don't think that they have enough talent. Chargers, <laughs> Brandon Staley's ass is going to get fired. And the Chargers, I mean, the Chargers job is probably the most attractive. You get to live in L.A., you got a great new stadium. You're getting new facilities. Uh, you have a fan base with low expectations. And, I mean, you got Justin Herbert. 
I, I, I think you're relatively good to go. Uh, Jets, no. Titans, no. Patriots, no. I mean, what a world. I mean, the Jaguars have been up and down, but the Jaguars being good, the Browns being good, the Texans being in the playoff places, and the Patriots being the worst team in the league or up there being the worst team in the league, it's rough, man. Uh, NFC, so the Eagles have won. The Lions, Luckbox Lions, uh, getting it done against the Bears. Again, the Bears were up 12 with four minutes left, and they lost by five. <laughs> Stupid ass Bears. Nah, nah, we got to put the bank thing on the Bears on Monday night. Uh, the Niners. It honestly seems like San Francisco is more concerned about McCaffrey's uh, touchdown streak than anything or starting a new one. Uh, but Purdy was perfect against the Bucks defense. Congratulations. Uh, Saints were on bye. Don't believe in the Saints. They should roll with Jameis, by the way, uh, as opposed to Derek Carr. Uh, Cowboys uh, uh, getting it done on the road against the Panthers. We'll see what happens this week when they host the the commies on Thanksgiving. Uh, I've always wondered this, too. Do you think that the Lions and the Cowboys always hosting Thanksgiving games is a competitive advantage? Because, yes, you play on Thursday, but you always know when you're going to play on, on Thursday. And also, you have a mini buy built in in the back end of the season to complement your regular buy. I feel, and, and it's going to be a home game. I, I feel like it is a competitive advantage. Mm. Uh, Seahawks uh, fall on the road against the Rams. They had a shot at the end. I, I just don't believe in Seattle this year. And, and you know, Walker got hurt now. Uh, Gino got dinged up, and now they play San Francisco on Thanksgiving night. Yeah. Uh, Vikings, whatever, whatever. Uh, get to 7-5, and five, heading to the bye. You'll be good to go. Uh, Packers rebounding, allegedly, against the Chargers. I mean, the, the Chargers are the worst team in the league, except for when they play the Vikings. It's so stupid. So stupid, man. But there's a log jam of teams at four and six. Uh, Vikings still have a game and a half lead over the, the field in terms of staving off a wild card. Uh, plus, they have the head-to-head -head against the Packers and the Falcons, so that's important. Uh, I, I don't believe the Bucks get back in. Uh, the Rams, Cooper Cup is now injured again. Hmm. Uh, Falcons, no. Commies, obviously not. Giants, no. Uh, Bears, Cardinals, uh, although... I, I do feel like the Cardinals are a lot friskier under Kyler, and I, I do think that they'll win a couple of games, and the Panthers are dead on arrival. But uh, if the Cardinals do win a couple of games, they'll, they'll drop uh, in the draft order. Uh, here's what it is right meow. So the Bears up at 1-4 and four, uh, since they do have Carolina's pick. I mean, Car Carolina's a mess. I mean, Frank Reich, I think, is going to be a one-and-done uh, with the Panthers. Uh, David Tepper does not seem like a very patient owner and doesn't mind paying uh, buyouts, and he'll be paying three coaches and staffs. Uh, next next year because Matt Rule, Frank Reich, and whoever the hell they get to trick into taking the Carolina job this time around. Arizona's up at two. I actually think they might roll with Kyler. Uh, so you know, getting Fashu the tackle or Marvin Harrison Jr. will be fantastic out in the desert. Uh, New England up at three. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Patriots up at three. They should be drafting a quarterback. Uh, the Giants. The Giants should be drafting a quarterback too. Tennessee Titans, Washington. Uh, Atlanta, Green Bay, Tampa Bay are your top 10 right now. The Jets, I mean, the Jets are approaching top 10 territory. And I, I know the Rodgers has said, like, oh, I'll come back week 16. What's the point? What's the point? Where you're you're going to put a, a, a decrepit, old-ass, bird-bones quarterback coming off of uh, an Achilles surgery behind that offensive line? Nah. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, it's bad, man. It's no, it's no bueno. Uh, but looking at some of the draft quarterbacks, so unfortunately, uh, Jordan Travis, who's been having a, a great year at Florida State, uh, he had a really – horrific looking leg injury hopefully uh he fully recovers and is good to go uh and he announced that his college career is over he's gonna be entering the draft and i think the kid's got a lot of talent and you know he could be a pick that could be right up quasi's wheelhouse because whether they resign kirk or they uh, resign dobbs i mean jordan travis might have to have like a partial redshirt year uh next year coming off that injury since it's late in the season and it did not look good uh you know we'll get full details uh, i'm sure this week but I mean, Travis got a lot of talent, man. Uh, I think Travis can play in this league, and his injury and potential redshirt could drive down his uh, draft status. So you know, maybe the Vikings maneuver, get him in the back end of day two, top end of day three, somewhere in there. It's possible. Uh, but also, the apple of my eye right now, and uh, he's the guy who's rising up draft boards. So Jaden Daniels, Jaden Daniels. That's right. Uh, the pride of LSU, formerly Arizona State. And he can get it done, man. So our guy, Ben Fox, uh, LSU quarterback, Jaden Daniels, minus 125, uh, is the new consensus favorite to win the Heisman Trophy at Sportsbooks. Uh, Bo Nix, Penix Jr., who had been the previous favorite, uh, have next best odds. Yeah, I think it's going to be Jaden Daniels, where Daniels is putting up ridiculous numbers at LSU, uh, both as a runner and a thrower. And I think that 
I, I, I don't think that he'll be a top end of the first round guy. Uh, I think that there's a couple question marks there, but I, I do think that he has the talent to be a first round pick. And frankly, the Vikings at the back end of the first at number 32, taking Jaden Daniels, have him sit behind Kirk or Dobbs for a year or two and then go from there. And you, you've seen what O'Connell can do at his best with a mobile quarterback, you know, a dual threat QB. I mean, Jane Daniels is fun to watch, man. Plus, it just continues to build up that Skull SU pipeline, uh, Baton Rouge up to uh, Minneapolis uh, with Daniil Hunter, with JJ, with Patrick Peterson for a hot second, uh, Jaquel and Roy, Ed Ingram. Uh, you would love to see it, man. You, you would. I, I'm Also, you know that – so JJ's got love and affinity for his state and his school. So you think that, hey – Vikings draft Jaden Daniels as a quarterback of the future. Do you think J.J. signs the next day, the next day? I'd love to see it. Hmm. Uh, something i also love to see. So uh, the chiefs a holic story where this dude, well, he, big-time Chiefs fan, a big-time gambler, went to all the road games, was, was a, a mainstay of Chiefs' kingdom, uh, and allegedly, allegedly, he bankrolled all, all of this lifestyle through Robin Banks. Uh, they, they got a mini documentary going on at ESPN+. Plus. And I, I, I'm looking forward to watching this because <laughs> this is just wild. I mean, this is just wild. Plus, it, he, apparently he started this uh, before the Chiefs got good. So uh, imagine, like, risking it for uh, – allegedly risking it for the biscuit for such a mid-team like the Chiefs. That would be like if the Titans had a, a super fan that was Robin Banks or, or Robin Drug Dealers or whatever. I don't know, man, but – crazy absolutely bonker story so uh th that'll be good but anyways yes you know everyone had their mini 24-hour funeral it is what it is but we are certainly on to the bears and get to seven to five staying alive heading to the bye week uh get healthy get 100 percent and get ready to slay last five weeks are going to be a blitz there's no reason why the vikings should not be nine to five a dolly parton heading into the first lions game at home on, on christmas eve bring it on babe bring it on but uh your thoughts are thoughts uh monday news dump Ooh, this ran long oh well uh let us know in the comment section below subscribe for daily vikings takes once more the work put a little something in the venmo but to next time skull production value